I'm David Hunt and welcome to The Art Hunter. I can't believe who I'm interviewing today. She is a legend, an Australian legend, and you'll pick it up along the way as I introduce her. Australian, a multi-award winner over the decades, a couple of decades actually, but she's only 19 now, so <laughs> how's she done it? 13, I David, thanks. <laughs> Um, and uh, as I said, she's a, an Australian icon uh, with roles in these two, two particular shows that, to me, are, are groundbreaking for an Australian. But we'll get to that a little bit later. An AO? Of course she has. Why wouldn't she? You know, like, with, with what she's achieved. Her early works brought us to the screen in a wonderful series called All the Rivers Run. Uh, and it became a huge success uh, around the world. And of course it would. And she won her first Logie Award for it as Best Actress. Of course she did. And I think she's got about 93 of them now, but who's counting, who's counting? Uh, she also went on to Paradise, uh, a US network prime time drama series, uh, received an award, yep, another one. Uh, and then roles in Prisoner and Wentworth. She's done it all, she's done it all. Peter Allen, Not the Boy Next Door, the, the, the show. She won another award there, portraying Judy Garland. Wow, and she was fantastic, because believe me, I've seen it multiple times. Uh, and then last year, Sydney Theatre Company, uh, and then 2023, Variety Club, she became a star in her own right, and so she should. She is an Australian entertainer of the century, one of a, a hundred in Australia. Uh, she is currently starring in a, a little indie Australian film. We will get to that, and that's one, one of the main reasons she's here now. So let's, have you worked out who it is? Have you worked out who it is? Have you worked out the two shows that I'm, I'm talking about where she is an icon here in Australia? We'll get to all of that. Yep, you've, you've guessed it. Zigrid, welcome to The Art Hunter. Thank you, David. It's a thrill to be here. Well, I'm very embarrassed by that extraordinary introduction, I have to say. I have to live up to it now. Oh, no, you don't have to. You've already <laughs> done that. But do you know, the, the thing is, I had to cut so much of it out because there were so many things that you've done along the way. You must be delighted with your career. I thought you say, I, I thought you were going to say, you must be 2010. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, boom, boom. Okay. nevertheless, no, I, I started as a child. So, you know, I, I, that that is part of the reason for the long list of credits, of course, because yeah. I really I was acting professionally at probably 13. Right. And uh, I started with you know the 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 all the the full gamut of the Crawford productions, yep. television shows, etc., which was my film training. And yes, I am proud to still be here, to be working, to have made a life out of something that I love so dearly still yeah, yeah. Um, and to have straddled all the transitions that my career has had. I, yeah. um, I am pleased uh, and I feel very fortunate. Well, we've got to talk one. It's, it's over your shoulder. The poster's over your shoulder. We've got to mention oh, yeah. it. The man from Snowy River. <laughs> yeah. Well, what was that? A turning point in your career? Yeah, it was. That that period was. I did. Yes. Um, I did Snowy. I don't. I'm always absolutely terrible with the year things happened, but it's a bit over 40 years ago. It's, it's had its 40 year anniversary. Wow. I think last year. Yeah. Um, uh, and uh, and that during that period, I did a lot of other work that was internationally recognised. So that was a sort of, it was a kind of springboard, if yeah, you like. Yeah. And um, as a matter of fact, Snowy has just been kind of rejuvenated by a series of orchestral concerts um, during which the film will be screened. We've just had a season in Melbourne and yep. the seasons um, in all the other states are yet to come next year screening the film with a symphony orchestra accompaniment, which has really been quite exciting to be part of. Did you go and see it? When I Melbourne not only did, went and saw it, Tom Berlinson and myself actually introduced the film on every night. Whoa. And, we, and we have a sort of chat on stage for 20 minutes or so, just about the experience, uh, a very kind of personal, just a personal chat, which makes the evening a little bit more, I suppose, um, 
what's the word? Private and personal, upfront and personal yeah. uh, for the audience. And they seem to really enjoy it, and respond to it. But it's also a kind of reminder that the film has now introduced itself to several uh, generations yeah, uh, over, yeah. over time. Uh, and you know, like, how proud are you of that moment in time? You know, it, it's a legend here in Australia, Man from the Story River, isn't it? And then the film, and that you're one of the, the central characters in it. Well, you know, you never know where things, are, where life's going to take you. I don't necessarily consider. I don't. I don't spend a lot of time thinking about um, legacies and history. I, okay. I like to stay in the moment. I right. like the process of the work, Good. and I like to think about what's coming up. Yeah. But I don't really. Li I like. Don't necessarily like to consider a five-year plan either. Yeah. I enjoy the process of trying the best I can yep. to stay right in yep. the moment, which yep. is which is a, a very big part yeah. of um, performance work anyway. The other one that I want to talk about, which is over my shoulder, is Sea Change, ABC's famous Sea Change. A couple of diver dance, but you you were there all all the way along. Mm. What was you know like? Could you see that coming when you took that role? Not at all. No, I mean, I knew I did. No, is the wrong description. I felt extremely drawn to the project. I, I must say, when I'd first heard about it. It sort of came, it, it was being talked about because it was was being cast out of Melbourne, ABC. And uh, I read a synopsis and it sounded kind of fairly workaday, if you like, on, on its surface. You know, a city lawyer leaves, goes to the country and, and uh, has to renegotiate life in a small town. I thought, okay, you know. <laughs> uh, but then as soon as I read the pilot episode by Andrew Knight and Deb Cox, I was completely taken with it and I auditioned very hard to get it. I auditioned four or five times for the role because they didn't really want to cast um, uh, an actor who had uh, a recognised history. Ah. I think, well, this is my potted history, I okay. don't know. Um, I, I suspect that it would have been easier and perhaps, yes, perhaps easier for them to have cast um, a slate of, uh, of actors who no one else had any association with of any other kind. Uh, but I wore them down. <laughs> Thankfully for me. Thankfully for you. Uh, and but the fact is that you know, like, it went on for years and years, mm. didn't it? And yeah, it did. Did you enjoy it? You know, like, still right at, at the end of it. You know, I loved you, it. Yeah, I did. And it was. It's a beautiful role, and um, to some extent, uh, even though Laura's not me and I'm not Laura, um, of course. there's a lot of um, and and that's you could say that it's a truism. You could say that about <laughs> any, any any performance role, but. Um, she, Andrew particularly, had uh, an extraordinary gift for writing very much to what I could bring. Uh, and that increased uh, over time when he saw what I was, what I was bringing to the table. So um, I really enjoyed, um, I, I never got tired of the humour, of the drama and, and, and of the juxtaposition between the two. Comedy drama is a really beautiful, yeah. fun thing to do as an actor because you, you, the day is never boring, let no. me tell you. <laughs> yeah. and, and it takes you on a different realm, doesn't it? Mm. Instead of doing a straight, straight role per se. Yeah. You know, and you would have a lot of laughs um, behind well, the that's scenes the thing. as well. I mean, comedy yeah. is great fun. It's, yeah. It requires meticulous um, timing. timing, but it, it is enormous fun, yeah. and everybody has a great time yeah. laughing, don't they? It's yeah. it's one of the great joys of life. Yeah. Um, is is um, is good comedy. Yeah. So, uh, and, and at that time, also, I think David, we hadn't seen on television, we hadn't seen comedy drama on Australian television. Mm. We'd seen it on the big screen, but we hadn't really produced um, comedy drama for the small screen. And so it was, um, to that extent, groundbreaking, although we had no idea it would capture people's imaginations in the way that it did and become a sort of sociological phenomenon yeah, in the yeah. way that it did, yeah. So all the, all the films, all the, the, the TV, how hard is it to turn it around and then go on stage? Uh, it's essentially the same process. I mean, you're, what you're, what an actor is doing is interpreting, um, interpreting text, uh, using their own imagination, their emotional and intellectual recall, and 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 producing uh, an interpretation. So that is the same. But in theatre, it's it's slightly to say it's bigger is wrong, is is it would be misleading. It's it's more opened out into uh, because it ha it's it's being performed for a large space. And there's a sort of circular vibe, if you like, vibration between the audience and the performers on the stage. And that creates a different energy. So it, the experience of being on the stage with 
people in the same room uh, and doing it live and, and every performance being different is, is quite, is unique. But um, the great thing, the thing that I love the most about theatre is the rehearsal period which um, unfortunately isn't given um, to actors for the most part in television. There might be a short rehearsal period oh, okay. in, in order that actors be able yeah. to um, get to know one another a little bit before yeah. filming starts. And yeah. the same goes for feature films, um, but to varying degrees, depending on budget, of course. Yeah. Um, well, no, it's not always. On Slant, which we'll get to, we had a good rehearsal period, but that was prioritisation. In theatre, you have a month if you're working for a big theatre company, um, and a month to s jump in the sandpit and fool around <laughs> and not have the responsibility of performance, a finished performance, is a great, great luxury and, yeah. and, and, and a joy. Yeah. yeah. What do you prefer? On stage or...? It's, it's impossible to... to really? To, so yeah. you enjoy It'd be both. like saying, which kid do you prefer? Oh, you, you know, told I me... Off the, no, yeah, I, I can't. Joking. Uh, I'll tell you later. No, <laughs> um, no I just... I just think they're so different. Yeah. Uh, I must say I find that the um, the challenge the ma of the marathon of theatre is really, that's a part of performance work that's quite, um, that I hadn't expected until I went into professional theatre, which was relatively late in, in yeah, my career. Yeah. Uh, although I'd done some theatre as a, as a, as a young, much younger person before leaving Queensland. Um, yeah, once you open, and once you've settled the show in, you then need to replicate that energy every night, and that requires enormous discipline. Mm. Uh, but it's part of the bit, part of the gig, and yeah. uh, and I enjoy that too. I enjoy the overcoming uh, the sense that one, it, you know, that, um, that that it might get stale, the worry that it might get stale. Yeah. Absolutely, just sort of leaping off, leaping off a new precipice every night. Mm. That's uh, it's very invigorating. The awards, they've flowed for you, haven't they? You know, like well, um, you know, I. Thank you, but it's not. It's that's not the main but, game. But it must be wonderful, though, to be recognised by, and in a lot of cases, by your peers. Um, you know, like it, it's it, it make, makes it all sometimes a little bit worthwhile, maybe. Um, it's it, to suggest that it makes everything worthwhile is 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 probably misleading. Certainly in my case, I, I've I have a sort of. Um, a drive for this work that is that doesn't come from a place of um, seeking reward or gratification of that kind. Yep. Um, of course, but, that's not why you do that, it. But that um, said, it's wonderful to be acknowledged. Of course, it is. I, yeah. I'd be lying if I told you it wasn't. I'd be yeah. lying. And, and and you know, if if no, if one didn't want to want an award, one sh simply shouldn't turn up <laughs> to receive it. Yeah. So um, you know, but but uh, but it's not it's not the main game. It's a, yeah. it's a very very different um, game for me. Have you been surprised though? You know, like you know, being recognised by your country with an award. Um, how special is that? It's wonderful. I think that the. Um, the, the, the reason that I've had some recognition on a, on a sort of slightly broader level, or, 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 or when you say country, it suggests much broader, and, and, and in some ways you're right. That, that's, that's to do with um, the fact that I've, I've done a lot of work outside of the immediate business of being a performer. That is to say, I've been an arts advocate really all, most of my professional life. Yep. And I've done a lot of um, I've, uh, work on uh, arts boards and cultural advocacy, arts advocacy, etc. So I think that some of that is, is um, that's, that's it, some of those kinds of acknowledgements have been the result of, of that kind of work as well. I'm going to mention one. It's almost a beautiful little segue. The Sigrid Thornton report that helped. Oh get... yes, yes. How? It you know, like, <laughs> makes me laugh. Tell <laughs> our, our our viewers what what happened there. Uh, well, this, the Brax government, uh, Steve Brax, invited me to chair a task force, so as, as it was called, um, to investigate and recommend um, potential policies for turning the film and television industry around in Victoria. It had, at that time, a very proud history, but it was flagging and it was losing to the other states. And most people who know about um, the history of television and film globally would know that um, that it brings not only is it 
critically important for mm. us to tell our own stories and, and those sorts of things. And I assume that that's something you'd concur on. But it's also something that generates an enormous amount of income for, yeah. the, for the state. So those two factors combined um, led the, the government of the time to believe that it was important for us to do something about it. And so, um, and so that's how I, um, I was offered the, the chairmanship of, of a board of people, wonderful board of people, with whom we wrote and we together produced a report for government. Uh, and I, I have to say the the Brax government took up every proposal yeah. uh, because they it was done in enormously good faith. Yeah. yeah. Well, the interesting thing, you're not aware of this, Tim that walked you in here today, the week after you you gave that report to the government, he went to the government with the idea of the Docklands Studios. Ah, uh, yes, right, yep. Yep, yeah, yep, like, so, yep, and you yep. were with him today. Did you know that? I didn't know it was Tim, but I knew that the Docklands... I, and did Tim run the studios? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that was Tim. Yeah. I'll have a chat he to him about that later. Um, yeah. the whole Well, the, the, the studios, of course, you know, were um, uh, in, in, the, uh, in the mix, uh, yep. uh, a, a sort of general and abstract proposal about about the, the possibility of a dedicated space. Um, so, you know, and, and uh, one of the provisos, which I still maintain is very important for any major studio in any place, is that it, it, it must be accessible to local uh, outfits. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's, a, that's another story. Yeah. Here we are today, over your other shoulder is a little have India, a have a look. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, which you, you mentioned earlier. Uh, a little indie Australian film. What's it called? It's called Slant. W and, w w you know, like, or here slant. you are. Slant. Slant, if you like. Uh, but here you are in this little indie... You're a superstar in Australia well, film yeah. and, and television. Semantics, um, David. <laughs> no, you are. You are. Uh, and you're like, this is what makes people love you even more, is that you take take on uh, being part of a little indie film. Yeah, it's a, it's a lovely little film. Yeah, it is. I really adore... We have become a bit of a family. Mm. And the script came to me in a slightly unusual way, as things tend to happen in life, through a friend of a friend. OK. And I read it and thought, this is really unusual. It's unorthodox. It's hard to make something different now, uh, to create something that's truly different. And I liked that about it. I thought this will either work or it won't, and that's OK. It was a great role for me. Um, and when I met the... Um, the people who were going to produce and, uh, and who make wrote the film. It? Well, uh, it's a young actor, writer, producer, and yeah. um, and in this case, writer first. Michael Niku mm. had written it um, as a, as a vehicle for himself, partly, yeah. and also as a vehicle for a group of friends whom he's known for many, many years, with whom he's made a lot of stuff and with whom he's very creative on lots of levels. Yep. Uh, one of whom, James Vinson, is the director. That's uh, right. Uh, we all, they all came to the film, I should say, as their first feature. Yep. But particularly, James should be singled out as, as a young director who had done an enormous amount of work. He'd done a lot of shorts and a lot of long shorts. And he was really ready for a feature. And I could tell from looking at his earlier work that that was the case. Um, uh, and Monique Fisher, our producer, uh, our other producer uh, and main producer, our, our kind of absolute sort of matriarch of the whole production, young though she is, um, was an extraordinary, is an extraordinary meticulous producer who was so ready to fly. And they all were kind of ready to fly. Yeah. And so it was something that I just, I really took it on. We be it, beca it just became... It, it just ended up being something we all wanted to dedicate ourselves to in the longer term. Uh, and that, and I, so I've really helped um, uh, in whatever way I can with getting the, the, the word out and really getting um, sort of eyeballs on, that, on the picture. Because I, I believe in, um, you, know, I, you know, I'm not going to be around forever. And I'm certainly not on my last legs. Don't get me wrong. I plan <laughs> to work until I fall yes. off the pool, porch. Yeah. I am. A, I think you said it was 18, but I said 19. <laughs> it's more like 25. No, oh, okay. I will. I'll do this until I drop off, right? Yep. But yep. Uh, that said, 
Uh, I, I think it's, you know, I'm a, an enormously big believer in, um, in Australian work and nurturing Australian talent is a big part of that. Yep. So uh, I think it's, you know, it just goes without saying that mm. um, I would want to work with, with some, some really talented young people and, and I, found, I found, fortunately for yeah. me, a group of those people in Slant. But what, what I find about Slant is that um, it's the style of it. Mm. it. It's got, you know, like, could you see mixed that? Mixed media. Sorry? <laughs> it's sort of mixed media. Mm, well, yeah. it's, it's genre busting, isn't yeah. it? It's, uh, yeah. It's not, um, it's not one genre. It's a kind of, it's a kind of camp romp, but it's also a thriller. Uh, it's also got a bit of horror. It's also comedic. It's also very personal. It's a, it's a story of a dysfunctional, two dysfunctional families, actually. Uh, and that's where I come in. But it is, um, and, and there are moments of enormous poignancy in the film. So it is, it's a lot of things. And, and Michael really did tip a lot of things into that pot and give it a great big stir. And we all stirred it with him because, because it, was, um, it was also a very collaborative project. It was a Best Idea Wins project. And that was gr a great thrill as well because that's, that's always the most rewarding way of working, I think, yeah. for everybody. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but how exciting is it to be around somebody like Michael? I, I have done an interview with him on, on my radio show. Mm. And I, I was just blown away. Yeah. I, I just thought, He's a Whoa. charismatic figure, there's no doubt about yeah. it. Yeah. And what, what he's achieved, you know, the people he's pulled together yeah. and, um, uh, and, you know, like, and co-producing as well and mm. acting in it. And, and, you know, like, he's wonderful. I mean, he's just, he's a dear friend now. And, and, uh, and that's come as, from and, it? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Fantastic. I mean, I didn't know Michael from a bar of soap. Right. Uh, nor, nor did I know James or Monique or a great number of other people on the film. And we had, we ge genuinely, uh, people say it a lot on films, but it actually happened on Slant. We, we made an extremely strong bond very quickly. And the, I love it also, the fact that he just didn't go out, you know, like, as having a, a, a theatre release. But you did all these little, yeah. and you were part of it as well. Yeah. I also loved that about it, actually, David. That, and this was just pure innovation. Um, you know, Q&As, we know about Q&As and what they, what they are. Yep. And we do, they happen a lot at the, the, at the um, art house cinemas. Nevertheless, this was a slightly different approach. We went around the country doing Q&As at smaller art house cinemas just in order to get some vibe around the film. And people just loved it because it gave... It, it created a sort of more, it's rather hard to describe, we should t coin a phrase for it, but it, it, it was like in each case, the creators got to have an artist's statement, if like, like someone does at, you know, at a gallery opening, yep. an artist gets up and yep. talk, talks about the genesis of the work and why and how, and we did that every night. And the audiences just loved it because it gave the film a context for them. Uh, that they wouldn't otherwise have had, and they weren't coming in cold. And they just, they really, really responded to that. And I, I'd like to see more of it, actually. Mm. But now what's happened, you know, um, fortunately, is, and, and, and due to the, just, due to the good graces, but also because of the, 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 um, the, the film itself, the quality of the film, it's generated uh, a release in all the different cities and we're, we're going out in release in October. So it's great. <laughs> you know, so it's a very, very grassroots approach and it's paid off for them and I admire them tremendously. And how smart, you know, like how smart to do it that way. And uh, and you, you don't need a lot of money sometimes. No, I, you, know, like, you don't. You, you just know, need a little tiny uh, bit of yeah. and a, an enormous amount of energy, I have to say. Yeah. They have, yep. they are, they're all OCD, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in a good but, way. But it's, but it's lovely that you went along for the ride, though, wasn't yeah, it? By going to. out to yeah. the Q&As and, uh, and being part of it to, to begin with mm. as well. I wanted so, to support the film. Yeah. yeah. So what, what does that do do for you? you know, like, do you want to do more maybe little indie films? It's or? about the role. It's yeah. about the role. It's about the team. It's always about that. It's um, for me, anyway. Uh, and uh, this was a terrific opportunity to play someone I'd never, uh, uh, the likes of which I'd never really played before, um, and to work in a different kind of way, um, in, a, in, a, in a, a very streamlined, stripped down way, with a really talented group of people. And yeah. so I, I, I'm in, incredibly grateful for the opportunity. So yeah, if a, if a, if a small film comes along that gives me those same sorts of opportunities or something a bit different again, 
Uh, I'll, I'll jump in. I just think it's it's really about um, the the kind of the components that the, the script script is the top of the apex for yep, me, yep. and of course director and other performers yeah, and other yeah. um, uh, key creatives. But without a good script, you you can't yeah. begin. So do you get many? Scripts yeah, come to you. Yeah, a few. Uh, it's not. It's a small business. Australia yeah. is a smaller business. Mm. So the, the 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 only challenge with being an actor. I adore the the work, but an actor is at the mercy of what is being written, mm. uh, uh, and and that means that they're at the mercy of what writers are wanting to write about. What is the society talking about? What is the zeitgeist, if you like, or or what is an, an alternate reality for the zeitgeist? What what are people interested in? So the actor can't necessarily choose to um, when they've got a kind of creative boil up. They can't necessarily choose to put it on the fire. Uh, so that that's that's a disadvantage. And actors can create their own work. And I'm always dabbling away at my own stuff as well too. So I do believe in creating self-generation as well but um you know it's 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 complicated so yeah when you say do you receive scripts i do i, kn I knock stuff back because i want to try and keep um moving forward creatively um so uh yeah i'm just always kind of the right role is sometimes a little bit hard to define mm, as well it's yeah it's kind of a gut instinct you you mentioned that you like creating some stuff yourself what what are you thinking here where, where are you going uh, well, I'm, I'm, interest, I'm interested perhaps in producing ultimately. Oh, okay. Yeah, and uh, creative production um, and, and pulling... I'm interested in the idea of pulling the right teams together and putting putting something together. But it's not an easy job. No. I have to say that nor is directing. I mean, you know, in some Would ways... Would you do that? I've heard a lot of actors say, oh, it's the easiest gig in the world. It's not, <laughs> but at least there's one thing on your mind. A director and a producer have um, have to have it, you know, yeah. a fifty track or a hundred track uh, yeah. uh, mind every time, every day. So it's it's challenging. But yeah, of course I'd do it. Yeah, I'm in a heartbeat. But you know, it just has to be the right time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and yes, and the right right situation yeah. uh, as well, time and situation. Yeah. Uh, so what what is it in the future that you know, like for somebody that has got such a, a beautiful um, uh, career? Uh, that you must be so proud of, because uh, I'm proud for you. Oh, thank you, David. Uh, but thank you. you know, like, is, is there, you know, is it that producing side of it now, or have you got something else in the back of your mind? Not really. No, I, d I don't. As I said earlier, um, I don't really operate on a five-year plan. I want to keep working on stimulating stuff that is um, that is keeping me buoyant. Uh, and, I, and what I mean is, I, I don't want to. I, I'd like to not go into ever, ever go into creative stasis, <laughs> and that's that's a big ask. Yeah. But that's my aim. Yep. Um, so I, I just want to keep, want to keep working, want to keep moving. Yep. Um, but I also, you know, I value a lot of other things in life, like anybody. Of course. Uh, and so I need to keep a broad. Uh, I think it's important to keep mm. a broad perspective. Is what I always. Um, yeah. Talk to young actors about as well. Yeah. Like, you know, don't forget about the rest of the world because yeah. that's uh, even more important than what you, than what you're doing. We're yeah. not saving we're not saving lives, but we are hopefully enhancing them by um, by discussing our own indigenous stories. Yep, but it's important that the creative side of things is telling those wonderful stories so that it keeps us all aware of what's going on in the world as well. It does. Um, and, and what's going on, you know, the, the fact of the matter is we are not, um, uh, we are not England and we are not the States. We are not, we, eat, we speak English, the English language, but we are very, very different yeah. culturally to yeah. them. Yeah. And we are starting to be a bit more representational walking down the street of the rest of the world. We are much more multicultural now. And we used to bang on about it forever, but now it's genuinely the case. And, that is. And finally now there is an opening up. I said Indigenous stories and I meant it in this sort of other sense of the word. But 
uh, First Nations stories are now coming to the fore at last. So we are, there is a genuine maturation yeah. now in terms of our storytelling. Yeah. Um, but we need to be really vigilant because we've got the streamers coming down the track um, and, uh, you know, we've got the strike in the States for some of these same reasons. There's, there's, um, there are rumblings in the creative community yeah. so that we um, maintain our uh, vigilance, as I said, about keeping story, our local stories alive and well, not just alive and well, but thriving and growing. Mm. I think it's one of those, it's the old Joni Mitchell song, Don't It Always Know, you seem to go, that you don't know what you've got until it's gone. Yep. I really do think that any person walking down the street, if you told them it was all going to go away, and i.e. our local stories, they'd go, oh my God, I can't, that's unthinkable. But it's it's some we don't ever want to take it for granted no no but i think we're in a very healthy p position and people like yourselves being involved in this wonderful little indie film called slant and congratulations again on your brilliant career thank you david i really appreciate no that. no really. it's my pleasure and what an honor to actually meet you today so <laughs> thank, thank you. you likewise bless <laughs> thanks you've been watching the art hunter i'm david hunt and we'll be back again next week. There's only a couple of shows left to our 100th. So get ready, people. Celebrations are coming. See ya.